I'm Pastor Kim Pilmore, and I'm excited to be here. Glory to God. You know, um, we are going to be looking at Old Testament examples of the ministry of help. We're looking at part two. Part two. I absolutely love the ministry of helps. And um, I actually prefer to be in the background, and I actually prefer not to be in the forefront. I, I would rather be helping. And, and um, one, one thing I, I really noticed when we were looking at the scripture is, you know, to be a, a good leader, Jesus said that whoever wants to be a leader and whoever wants to be the head dog, you know, basically, uh, when the disciples were arguing and stuff over who was the greatest, you know, he said that who was the greatest is a person who's a servant, you know? So the ministry of helps to me is awesome because you really are a servant. You're using your skills and abilities. And, and to me, in my terms, that's a leader. You know, I won't follow a leader that just is a leader because they have some big title or something. You know, I, I need to see that person, uh, you know, doing and helping and being there, you know, just like the example that Jesus was, you know? And so I relate to that because I love the ministry of helps. I love to help people. And uh, it's just fantastic. So we're going to take a look at Exodus 17, 9 through 12. All right. It, it, in Exodus 17, 9, it says, Moses commanded Joshua, choose some men to go out and fight for the army of Amalek for us. Tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill holding the staff of God in my hands. Next. Okay. So Joshua did what Moses had commanded and fought the army of Amalek. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and Hur climbed to the top of a nearby hill. And as long as Moses held up the staff in his hand at the Israelites and had the Israelites had the advantage. But whenever he dropped his hands, the, how do you say it? The ites. I'm just going to call them the ites. I'm a common person and big words don't do well with me. So the ites basically gained the advantage. So Moses' arms soon became so tired he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and Hur found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses holding his hands up. So his hands held steady until sunset. All right. So when Israel faced this huge battle, you know, one of the folks, Moses, he got a strategy and he had this strategy, you know, I'm going to go hold my the staff up and hold my hands up. And as long as they're up there, you know, God said that basically they would have victory, right? <laughs> so can you imagine that? Um, they look at this as part of the ministry of helps, you know, and as he was holding his hands up, who were his helpers? Who were his helpers? Yeah, Aaron and her. Um, so her. So I thought it was really interesting. I mean, I don't think I would like that job to have to stand there holding my hands up, right? You know, I could barely hold my hands up for five minutes or, or let alone. So, you know, Moses is holding that staff up and, you know, their heart and, and their desire was not just there to serve Moses. Their heart and desire was to ensure that the Israelites, that team of Israelites, that, that they would be successful. So they had the vision and the foresight to be able to see, you know, hey, we need to help, you know, they weren't just helping hold Moses's arms up. They were helping support the Israelites and the victory and the, and the, and the, and the, and the great, um, the great uh, victory of God's people. You know, there was more to it than just, oh, we're going to hold up Moses arm. 
Well, no, it was the purpose of the plan of God, you know, and that's exciting to me. It doesn't matter, you know, whether you're the, you know, we have folks here that are, their heart is their heart and man, they just come in and scrub the toilets, you know, glory to God. They, they, they see things on the floor in here and they pick them up. You know, there's things I see and that I do, right? But I mean, there's people that just love this. I mean, when I talk to Nettie, Nettie's like, she says, well, I said, well, Nettie, you're such an anointed teacher of the word of God. You know, don't you want to be a part? Don't you want to uh, share on, on Thursday evenings? And she says, no, Kim. She says, I just love to help. She said, I would rather be back here cutting the cake on, on birthday Sundays. I'd rather be helping clean. I'd rather vacuum. I'd rather be in the back running the slides. You know, that's what really moves me. It gets me excited. And I could relate to that because I like to help other people at work. You know, I may not be the top head dog at the corporation that I work at, but you know what? I am there to help. I'm not necessarily there because I love that person. I love the mission and the purpose of the company. And I want to see our the customers and I want to see the goals accomplished. Just like, um, Aaron and her wanted to see God's purpose and plan fulfilled. It wasn't about serving that leader so much to make sure he was great. It was about serving the plan and the purpose of God. And that's what I get excited about. God's plan and purpose. So how important was the ministry of helps in this instance? If that guy's hands would have gone down, Moses, what do you think would have happened? The, the, the victory stops. So ministry of helps in my little pea brain is the most important ministry of them all because it's being the servant. It's being there to do whatever needs to be done to ensure that the plan of God goes forward. And that's why I love the ministry of helps. Let's take a look at 1 Samuel 14, 7. And when I first got this lesson, I was like, oh, my God, Pastor Mike, I can't believe I got this thing. It talks about these armor bearers in here. These armor bearer things are something that I understand the least about, you know, and I've seen all kinds of books about it. I've seen people take it to an extreme, you know, and I was like, oh, no, I don't want to minister on that, God. Of course, God has a sense of humor because I always get the, the, the things that, um, you know, I usually get the things that I'm thinking, oh, my God, I can't do a good job on that, you know, because I'm a common, ordinary person. And, and I'm glad that I am because God loved the common, ordinary person because he made so many of us. You know, glory to God. So I get to do this one and I actually got something really good out of it. So it's first Samuel 14, seven through eight. It says, do what you think is best. The armor bearer replied. So I'm thinking of this guy, you know, there's this warrior thinking about this guy who's his whole purpose is, you know, I'm thinking, oh, it's just carried this armor around. Oh my God, what a great job that is. You know, how am I going to get something out of that? But I did, I did. God opened my eyes. It says, and the armor bearer replied, I'm with you completely, whatever you decide. What an attitude. You know, it's like corporate America. You know, the, the workers, we all work together. And it's like, you know what? We're a team. Let's get this done together. You know, whatever you decide, we'll make it happen. So, all right, then, Jonathan told him, we will cross over and let them see us. Moses, is, is this the right thing? <laughs> yeah, you, you got to remember, 
I am highly reliant on slides or whatever it is. Even at work, if I'm giving a presentation, whatever the slides are, I go with. I know the back's telling me stop it. Okay. If they say to us, stay where you are and or will kill you, then we will stop and not go up to them. But if they say, come on up and fight, then we will go up. And that will be the Lord's sign that he will help us defeat them. When the Philistines saw them coming, they shouted, look, the Hebrews are crawling out of their holes. I thought that was humorous. <laughs> They're crawling out of their holes. Then the men from the outpost shouted to Jonathan, and I love this, Come on up here and we'll teach you a lesson. You know, I could just imagine, you know, the bantering going forth, you know, like you um, don't laugh, like the wrestling, you know, my kid loves wrestling and they're, man, they're bantering at each other, you know, you know, come on up here and we'll teach you a lesson. Come on, climb right behind me, Jonathan said to his armor bearer, for the Lord will help us defeat them. So they climbed up using both hands and feet and the Philistines fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer killed those who came behind them. They killed some 20 men in all and their bodies were scattered over about half an acre. Suddenly panic broke out in the Philistine army and both in the camp and in the field including even the outpost and raiding the parties. And just then an earthquake struck and everyone was terrified. Saul's lookouts in whatever of Benjamin saw a strange sight. The vast army of the Philistines began to melt away in every direction. Is that it? That's the next one, or is that it? All right. So I thought that was really cool, because when I first got I thought, oh, my God, how am I going to explain this? I've got an armor bearer out of all things i got to talk about. <laughs> so what I got out of it is I thought it was really cool, because one person, you know, they're locked in there together, and I imagine them as they're crawling up. If the one guy is having to fight what's behind them, you know, they're unified in purpose. So you probably got one climbing up, and the other one's doing this. He's got his back. And so you got two people one had the purpose and the plan of God right and he, he had the direction he's no greater than the armor bearer and the armor bearer his job is he's supporting that plan and that action because they knew if they hollered at him and said come on up here then they knew that they were going to have victory so they put he put the ministry of help pursues that unified purpose that's out there to to pursue what the plan of purpose and the will of God is no matter what it is it had to be hard knowing they only killed 20 people and there's a whole bunch more out there right but you know what as they pursued both of them together as a team the earthquake came and then the Philistines melted away as they were pursuing the purpose of God and to me that's a perfect love story and a marriage between what you see is someone who's serving another person and to me it was more a joy purpose as they work together amen well so armor bearers <laughs> I no longer think of that as a, a big uh, a big word you know where I'm going oh my god I gotta explain the armor bearer because you know there's all these books about that all this stuff about this you know what I actually got excited about it because I could see the plan and the purpose behind it it was a unified thing it served a purpose and they fought together you know, it's kind of like having two people maybe that have have skills, you know, maybe maybe one if you were sewing, maybe one could sew and the other one could cut fabric. 
right? You put the two together, they help each other, and they meet the purpose of sewing a garment, right? So to me, that's what I got out of all of this, is the Ministry of Helps is a really cool, awesome thing, you know? And I'm in the Ministry of Helps no matter what. You know, I may teach whatever, but I'm always here to serve because that's what Jesus has called us to do. Amen? Um, in our next lesson, we're going to look at the New Testament examples of the ministry of helps. And I think that'll be much more easier for whoever has that. <laughs> and I'm Pastor Kim. Thanks for watching. Glory to God.